Ladies and gentlemen, this video will introduce you to the StereoNet 11 software by Rick Almendinger that we are going to use in the prax uh, on, on fold and analysis in this, in this course. And uh, I assume you have installed the uh, software on your, on your laptop. And when you start the software, you will see a screen pretty much like that. This gives you the stereo net, it's a lower hemisphere projection and you can, uh, you can have a look at the main settings under window preferences where you can define what kind of format you want to input in your data set and uh, obviously as you remember from last year we are going to use trend and plunge, three digit, two digit number. So that would be the trend here, the plunge and for the planes uh, you see here there are a var variety of, of options and uh, we are going to use as last year the CLAR values that means the dip azimuth and the dip. That is the first thing that you should set and uh, that would be your input format. Small circles we are not going to bother for now. Uh, trend, plunge, apical angle, that's fine. And you confirm that with OK. And here we see the lower hemisphere projections that we, we have discussed last year with north, south, uh, east, west and, and the degree segmentation. Now, let me just show you where we want to arrive with uh, our exercise in, in principle. And I have here a demo file with plenty of data. So let's assume we are starting afresh. None of these data are shown. Um, the principle of fold analysis from fold limb readings is pretty much always the same. The first step would be to plot your limb readings and you can do that as great circles as we see here. Uh, but for our purpose, it is more useful to plot them as their corresponding poles to planes. This is a small data set, only three readings from each limb. You see they are a little bit variable in orientation. That is also normal for field data because folds are never perfect and they are never perfectly cylindrical. Let's start with the poles to the planes that we see here. That is the first piece of data that you need because you know from the other video about the general procedure that uh, the best fitting grade circle through these poles will be your pi plane. And here we see the pi plane and the pole to that best fitting grade circle would be the hinge line. That is the position that is here where the pi pole, the pole to that plane plots. That is also where the hinge line plots. And we can determine these readings quite easily. So once we have the pi pole and the hinge line um, determined, we need the strike of the actual surface. Well, that would be a lineation, obviously also plotting somewhere on the perimeter. In our example here, that would be this place. And if we produce a fitting great circle that goes through the strike of the actual surface and the hinge line, we will obtain the actual surface because in a fold, the hinge line always lies on the actual surface. If you have the strike for the actual surface, you can construct the plane of the actual surface. Now, this actual surface will have a pole and this pole in our examples plots over here. And that helps us to determine the interface angle for that we would need to have average values for the limbs over here and here and the angle from here to here or from here to here plus this here, that would be the possible interlimb angles. And depending on where the pole of the actual surface plots, in our example here, you would use the uh, segments from here to the perimeter plus 
from the parameter to this limb average that would produce your interlimb angle. And from these values you can then classify the fold, how steeply is the hinge line plunging, how large is the interlimb angle and so on. We have done that in second year. So the principle is actually fairly straightforward. The uh, technical procedure to use this software, that is the purpose of this video. And therefore we just start from scratch and we hope we are going to arrive at the same result since we are going to use the same limb data. Let's open a new file. Here we see our starting conditions. That is what you are going to see when you open the software. The first that we need to do is to add data. And we are going to do that here by going over there. We are going to add planar readings from the four limbs. These are data that you would have obtained in the field. And uh, we can label that, say, limb one. And on limb one, we might have the following data. You go down here, add a datum to this data set. And uh, let's assume our data are 210 and 60, 199, 55, and 205, 58. And when you press a hard return here, you always need to delete the last the last start datum because it assumes that another point is coming. So here is our first limb and we see here instantly plotted the great circles. We see that these are uh, southwest dipping planes. We see the great circles. They are bulging here towards the southwest about or south southwest 210 200 degrees That's somewhere here. So and they are dipping moderately steep 60 55 58 degrees well, that means here these great circles they intersect here a little bit closer to the center than to the perimeter because they are steeper than 45 degrees let's add another data set planes from limb 2 and we have data the first one would be 45, 70, the next one 55, 63, again delete the last one. So oh, this is our second limb and here we see these, this limb is fairly steeply dipping to the northeast. 45 degrees, so that is a dip, azimuth 70, 58 to 70 degrees, so it's over there. Now, great circles for our purpose are not particularly useful, so we need to add the poles to these planes. Let's go to limb one, and we go here to calculations and just click on poles, add the poles. And here we see our limb one, produces poles over here. You remember a pole to a plane always plots in the opposite quadrant. We do the same to limb two. Calculations, poles, they come down here. And these are fairly steeply north northeast dipping planes. For now we will not need the great circles, all we need are here, these two sets of poles to our limbs. So what we want to achieve is to construct the pi plane, the great circle that connects these here best. And we can do that with calculations, best fitting great circle. For that, 
we first need to bring these two data sets into one data set and we are going to merge here limbs of the poles to limb one with the poles of limb two and we get here merge lines and this would be all limb data. Let's take out these. We now have here all limb data. So and we see here all limb data come here uh, into one folder and having highlighted these data we can go to the plot menu and select the cylindrical best fit of all data sets that are highlighted at the moment. And that brings us here a so-called Bingham analysis. It produces three eigenvalues, one, two, and three. They are shown here with their trend and plunge. And it produces here the best fit great circle, strike and dip as right hand rule value. That is a setting that we cannot change, but you remember from last year, it is very easy to convert right hand rule into CLAR readings. We see here the strike is 217 of this plane and the dip angle is 71 degrees. And in order to get from right hand rules to CLAR values, we just need to add 90 degrees and that brings us to 307.2 degrees for a dip angle. Let's add that as a new data set. And that is our pi plane. And we add the datum 307 comma two. If you put in decimal places, you have to use a comma, not a point and 71 comma 2 is the is the dip angle and here we put in the label that is our pi plane then delete the surplus point and now let's have a look at this point here this from its position you can see that the eigenvalue 3 that is this point here that gives you the pole to that best fitting great circle, the pole to our pi plane. That is the pi pole, and that is the position of the hinge line, 127.2188. So also this data point we add, but now this is a line. So select here lines, and now this would be our hinge line. Add the value 127 comma 2 and 18 comma 8. So, and uh, now we want to get rid of these calculations and we go back here to plot cylindrical bed fit, best fit. Now you just select no data sets, no calculations for data sets should be shown. We go away, but we have entered our data already here as pi plane and as hinge line. And uh, what we want to add here again is the annotation hinge line so that we know what our datum means. So here is our hinge line. So the next step would then be entering our strike line of the actual surface because we want to connect the hinge line with that strike direction in order to get the actual surface. And that simply means adding another data point. And in our example, that would be given, that is something measured from a map or measured in the field. We have a strike here strike of the actual surface of 304 degrees and obviously a plunge of zero and we also label that one strike of the actual surface 
and it shows up in our diagram here. So now how do we get the connecting uh, orientation? That will work in a very similar way like in the previous exercise for the pipeline. And again, for this purpose, we need to merge the data set with the strike, merge lines. And for these merge lines, let's turn off everything else. For these merge lines, we want to have the cylindrical best fit of all data. And here is our actual surface. And not only that, also the pole to the actual surface. Let's add these data points. Actual surface and the datum. We can see the results down here. The best fitting great circles of our merge lines here would be 124.87. Again, that is right hand rule that gives you 214 and 80 comma 7 and sorry that would be the actual surface now let's look at eigenvalue number three we see here that point obviously has here a trend of just over 30 and here we see the value 34 with a shallow plunge of 9.3 degrees. Also that data point we add to our data set as a line. That would be pole to pole of the AS. And here we get 34. Then we can remove the calculations. Go cylindrical best fit and select no data labels. So now we see here our actual surface, our hinge line, the pole to the actual surface is plotted. And uh, we can also then show the pie plane. We can show our poles. We, we could show our great circles. So our stereo net is getting busy. Let's now try the last step. The last step means the determination of the interlimb angle. And you know that the interlimb angle is always measured between the clusters of the limbs, either here as in this example, an obtuse angle or as the acute angle as the addition of this segment plus this segment. And uh, in order to calculate that, we first need to have good average values for these clusters and they need to be calculated. So let's remove for now everything that we do not need. We don't need the actual surface. What we need is the poles. And so let's see how we can determine the average for limb one. And in order to calculate the average, say for limb one, we highlight only limb one, we go to plot, and we select here the mean vector of all data sets that are highlighted at the moment. And we are getting here at the bottom, the mean trend and plunge as a lineation for this cluster of poles to planes. So we have this as a lineation. We add that to our data set. Add a datum, 24.8. That would be here the average vector orientation for limb one. So now we do the same for the poles of limb two. 
So now we have these two points that allow us again a calculation and the calculation we find here in this menu, calculations, angle between selected lines. Fairly straightforward. And you see at the bottom here, angle between the lines is 117.5. That would be the obtuse angle. 62.5 would be the acute angle. Let's plot again the pi plane. Let's plot the pole to the actual surface. So now let's have a look. Which do we need to select, the acute or the obtuse angle? Quite clearly, the pole to the actual surface is in this segment here. That means we use the acute angle, which is constituted by the length of this segment and the length of that segment. And the value would be here, 62.5 degrees. That is the angle between our average limb position expressed as linear fabric elements. Let's plot everything we have. We have the hinge line, we have the strike of the actual surface, we have the we have the actual surface itself, and this is our complete data set that we wanted to produce. In principle, that is always the same step-by-step -step exercise. We plot the poles to the planes of the limbs. We fit them on the pi circle. The pi circle gives us the hinge line. The hinge line together with the strike of the actual surface gives us the actual surface. The pole to the actual surface tells us where to measure the interlimb angle on the pi circle. The rest is all technical, the rest is all just getting to know how the software works and it's obviously important whenever you use software that you know what you want to do and that you have an idea what the result should look like because otherwise you cannot easily spot the mistakes that you might make along the line. So good luck with that. We are going to have some meetings about potential problems that might come up but I think in essence I have explained in principle how this works and uh, I hope that you can make good progress. Thank you very much.